Well, hello, good people. Today, I want to walk you through on how you can use SD3 on Swarm UI. Now, currently, you can only run SD3 on Comfy UI, Swarm UI, and I think SD Next as well. I like using Swarm for SD3 because it's super simple and it actually uses Comfy UI as a backend. Now, obviously, the first thing we need to do is download SD3. Now, this is the medium model. It's the 2B model. I'm sure you've all heard the ruckus about it. Anatomy on the model is not the greatest, but it does some things pretty good. And at least the good thing is if you're set up to run SD3 in general, when they release the other 4B model, maybe the 8B model they'll release. I don't know you'll be able to run it on Swarm UI. Go to this page here. I'll leave a link in the description below. Click on files. Typically for something like Comfy UI, you're gonna need all these models, but the only one we need currently is this one here, the SD3 medium safe tensors. So we're gonna click on download file, find your local Swarm UI folder. We'll double click on that. We're going to click on models and open that up under stable diffusion. We want to click on that. I have an extra folder here called official stable diffusion. I don't know why, but anyway, open that up and then we're going to click on save. That's where we're going to save the model. That's all we need to download for SD3 and I'll explain why. Now, if you had Swarm UI open, I suggest for you to shut it down and restart. If we go into the model section here, you see now we have SD3 populated here and also under the drop down, we can select SD3. Now we're going to do a quick demo here. I'm going to leave my steps at 30. They recommend 20 to 30 to start. Anywhere from 4 to 7 works. Uh, I'll put it at 5 here. I'm going to leave the aspect ratio 1 by 1, DPM++ to M. And this is where it's different for SD3. If we toggle this on here, we have a couple options here. And this has to do with the text encoders. We have clip only, T5 only, clip only plus T5. Now clip only will be a lot faster. So if you've got like a lower GPU, four gigs, six gigs of VRAM, it's suggested to use clip only. If you got eight gigs and up, you can use T5 only or clip plus T5. Obviously clip plus T5 will take a bit longer. I've got an eight gig card. We'll try it out and see how long it takes. But basically the T5 encoder is what separates SD3 from SDXL. It has better prompt adherence. It prompts a little bit different. So you'd have to experiment with it. Now we're just going to type in cute dog for now, just to make sure everything is running. And what's going to happen, it's going to take a little bit longer. If you notice here, it's saying that it's waiting on the model to load. But what also is happening in the back end, let's see if I can pull this up here. You see that it's going to be downloading the T5 models automatically. So that's why we didn't download the other models. Swarm UI knows to grab those models and put them in the appropriate folder. Now, while that happens, let's go back to our main Swarm UI folder here. And I'm going to show you within the models folder. So go to Swarm UI models under the clip folder. If we open that up, you see that we have our T5 model being downloaded here. But in case you want to know, that's where they're being stored. Now, if we go back to the interface, we have our image here generated with SD3. I'm going to generate another image just to see how quickly it generates now that it has the other models loaded. So if we look at the generation time here, 26 seconds with a 3060 Ti, eight gigabytes of VRAM. So if you have a faster card, it's going to be a lot quicker. And this was at 1024 by 1024. So you can see the anatomy is terrible, but again, it's very simple prompt. The other thing to keep in mind with SD3 medium, other aspect ratios other than one by one, tend to be a little warped and deformed. It's really not the greatest model, but it does some things fairly well. Now, the biggest benefit of SD3 is the prompt adherence. So I'm generating a few images here, a blue sphere atop a red cube with a dog on the left, cat on the right, mountains in the background. Uh, I did change the sampler to Euler. It seemed to produce better results here. But as you can see with these examples, so we have our 
dog on the left, our left, the cat on the right, and the blue sphere, red cube, mountains in the background. I know it's a very basic prompt, but it's important to understand how much better it is at adhering to the prompt, which is very promising for the improved SD3 model that they're said to do, and if they release the 4B or even 8B model later. Here's another one that came out pretty good. Now, if I do this with SDXL, you're going to see that sometimes by chance, it'll get the general idea. We have the blue sphere over the red cube. We've got an extra cat here, but the dog and the cat still kind of coherent. But if you look at the other examples here, not very coherent. This is typically what you're going to get with SDXL. Just doesn't understand direction very well and composition. So what does that mean for you? So let's back up for a quick second. Whether you know or not, SDXL is limited to 75, 77 tokens. Now, if you don't know what tokens are, basically it takes characters of three or four or whatever, and it breaks it down into tokens. So I took this really long prompt here, and you see that the tokens is 172. SDXL is limited to 75, well, 77 to be exact. This one is 172. So if you look at the words here that are called Alert. These are all tokens. Dark is a token. Illustration is a token. Featuring is a token. Even commas can be a token. So one of the downsides of SDXL, you only had limited words you can use. With SD3, technically you can go up to 500 tokens for more detail. Now this one's only 172. So I've put in this long prompt using SD3 and you see, I mean, the hands can use some work. Let's look at this one here, but the details in general are adhering to my prompt here. Very different than SDXL. So I wouldn't say the model is completely useless. They did say that they're going to be making improvements to it, which I'm looking forward to. But if I read you a little bit of the prompt, it says a dark and ominous digital illustration featuring comic characters spawn seated on a dark gothic throne. The figure has a pale skeletal face with glowing green eyes and a large red wing-like cape draped over his shoulders. Now it doesn't look like the character spawn, but in terms of the details, like the winged cape here, the skeletal-like features, it's pretty much following the prompt. And I think a lot of people will adopt this way of prompting. You can use ChatGPT, Claude, even for beginners, natural language is what they're going to prompt. They're just going to describe what they see. I'm going to generate a couple more images just to show you a few more examples here. And this character is based off the Hulk here. And I'm not cherry picking the images so you can see really how this model performs. If you notice, I'm keeping it one by one. So yeah, see the hands need some work. The body composition for the most part is the biggest thing they need to work on. But if you're doing like art artistic things, even landscapes, patterns, things like that. It's still a pretty decent model. So yeah, the hands here, it's not too bad, but you see the feet, it's kind of elongated. So you see a lot of deformations happening, but for the most part, it's following the prompt the way I've indicated here. Again, moving forward, this is going to be a very powerful way to create your images. So that's how you can use SD3 within Swarm. In the next video, I'm going to cover PixArt and how to use it in Swarm UI. And it's also like SD3 where you can use natural language. There are three base models available, Alpha, Sigma, and a recently released by Datavoid, a 900M PixArt version. So I'm pretty excited to show you guys that. But until that next video, I'll see you when I see you.